When I cried to the Lord, he heard my voice. He rescued me from those who attack me. And trust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, statutes and decrees, you will live and grow numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but are led astray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then, that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him, for that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm is, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his way, his, meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruits in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff 
which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord. So in our first reading, we're close to the end of Deuteronomy, and Moses lays out uh, the two ways. There's a way of following the Lord's laws, his statutes, his decrees, his divine plan, then there's the way of not doing that. And it's, scripture is replete with that. There's the foolish way, which is not following him. And there's the wise way, which is following him. It's over and over and over and over again in the prophets and in the wisdom literature. And, and here it is. You want life? Follow the Lord. Live his commands. If we don't, there's, there's punishment. There's, there's not fullness of life in this life and then certainly in the next. Hell is a real possibility. And, and the the fulfillment, if you will, the accomplishment of uh, this Old Testament, you'll get to the land and live in the land pros uh, with prosperity or you won't, that's, that's a symbol, it's a type of heaven. It's, it's a type of living this, this life and uh, experiencing the result of having lived for the Lord or not lived for the Lord. I think as we become more and more pagan in our culture, we're going to have to make it much clearer for people so that they actually make a decision to choose uh, for the Lord and not live what the world is giving us to live. There's not life in it. And in our gospel, Jesus says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Uh, there's no Christianity without the cross. There's no Christianity without the cross. The Son of God himself, because of the fallenness of human nature, the fallenness of this world and its systems, the Son of God himself went to the cross. Certainly anybody who wants to be intimate with him, be close to him, has to realize there has to be the cross. And the wise life, the wise lover of Jesus Christ, the wise person who realizes he or she is loved by God the Father in J Jesus Christ actually learns to savor the cross and realize it's, it's a must. It simply is a part of this life until our Lord comes again. If we do everything in our power to avoid the cross, 
we will actually avoid God himself. We literally will avoid life for him. The cross is part of uh, life. And it's actually, it's a precious part of life. Because by the cross, we share with our Lord Jesus Christ where his love was uh, the most glorious on Calvary. And so we end up hearing Jesus call us uh, into uh, the gospel of suffering, the good news of suffering. Well, that's the good news of suffering. There's fellowship with him if we allow suffering to push us towards him. So we ask our Lord, who suffered for us so profoundly, loved us so profoundly on Calvary, to help us encounter him more deeply than ever before in this Eucharist. Now with trust in our Lord's goodness and mercy towards us, we bring to him our needs. That the Lord may inspire men and women to choose to follow Christ through vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit may renew the commitment of our nation's leaders to choose life, we pray to the Lord that God may give strength to those whose crosses seem too burdensome, we pray to the Lord. That Christ may bless our practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. That all who have died, in particular today's Mass intention, Gerald King, and for all of our family members, friends, and parishioners who've gone before us, that they may gain eternal life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me.
Let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us a source both of pardon and of salvation through Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord and give him thanks. O salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, daro bulfer Oh. Uh. 